Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel, Pixel and Frisket Finds. My name is Michelle and today I have you at work with me. I've started this new series called Come to Work With Me and this is episode number two. And um, yeah, so a little bit about what we're doing here. I work full time at a jewelry store uh, during the day and I also thrift and resell jewelry part time on my own time. So <clears throat> here uh, at the jewelry store, I'm in charge of our vintage costume items. I'm in charge of going through the bags. I've got boxes and boxes of bags. And, um, and it's all just stuff that they've um, put away and, and kept put in boxes for probably 30 years now. So I have the pleasure of going through, finding the goodies, and listing the goodies on their eBay store. So in the description below in this series, you'll find a link to our eBay store uh, for the jewelry store where I work, as well as my own and my email. If you have any questions, you can always get in touch with me as well. Anyway, I figure uh, I did one episode of this. It had good, um, good comments and requests for some photography tips. I did take some photography in college and it's always kind of been a passion of mine. I had a, um, a company for a while where I did wedding photography and portraits and um, so photography is something that has always been a part of my creative outlet and now I get to use it on this beautiful sparkly goodies and how lucky am I? So I would love to be able to share some tips, some tricks or something. I don't, I don't, I honestly don't know what I have to give you, but whatever I do have, I'm going to give it to you. So make sure you're subscribed and that way you will know when I post the next come to work with me. And we're going to chip away at this bag first. I'll pull out a few items. We'll take a look at it. We'll do a little bit of research and, um, and then I'll show you how I photograph them for for listing. So let me know uh, in the comments if you have any questions and I can try to address them on the, sorry, there's a hair back here, I got it. I'll try to address, address any of your questions in the comments in the next video. Uh, so anyway, let's just get tucked into this here. So I set up a basic um, situation here with some, platforms and I have three pieces of black velvet on board two of them on the back making a backdrop and one on the bottom and I just find black background white prop tends to make for a nice presentation whether it's for video or for um, for photographs so the first piece I'm pulling out here is this brooch it is a clear rhinestone brooch Possibly Swarovski, and I know that only because it is marked. Where are you? I saw it on the way out of the bag. Aha! There we go. Sherman. Not all Sherman is uh, made with Swarovski crystal, but this one very well could be. It looks like the, uh, the Marquis cut or Navette cut ones are a bit yellowy compared to the rest, so it's got some age, for sure. But that's our first, our first piece. <laughs> I'm trying to find a way to, to display it while we carry on. So then we've got another brooch here. This looks beautiful. Let's get it out of the bag here, back it up a little. Mmm, yeah. Okay, so look at that. Wow, so beautiful. So Rivoli, like a ultramarine blue Rivoli all the way around and a big one in the middle. And look at how it's blue and purple. Blue and purple crystals and then a couple of different shades of blue around it, that lighter sort of aquamarine and more of a sapphire color and then this is reminding me of uh, Alexandrite I guess I don't see any kind of red flash in there but the purple and blue really pretty nice settings 
sort of a goldy brass tone and it says made in Austria so that's quite a large brooch on my hand you can see it takes up my whole finger area really pretty though isn't it look at that purple wow okay so Austrian crystal I don't know a lot about Austrian crystal um, from what I understand it's it's just glass or or crystal anyway um, I don't know if there's anything specific about Austrian crystal that makes it unique but that's definitely something we're gonna find out more about in this video isn't it so here's the next item it's a little bar pin and it's got marcasite and an amethyst now that's a really light purple amethyst, which is called Rose de France, when it's a light, light purple like that. And this bar pin is marked as sterling right there. Ooh, she needs some cleaning though, that's nasty. No problem though, I'm happy to do so. So I'll give it a wash and uh, yeah, those are real marcasite. You can see they're set in there with four little prongs and a Rose de France amethyst really pretty very small and delicate nice I like that a lot okay next let's back it up again we have another brooch this one's really interesting lots of uh, marquee or um, nevet cut stones and really beautiful AB coating on that um, every color of the rainbow is flashing there isn't it interesting design too with the open work and this sort of wire work here very pretty I don't see any marks on the back so and I mean I think I sound like I know what I'm doing, but I'm still really new to all of this. I'm still learning so much every day. Um, so yeah, learn what you can from me, but, but know that I'm still learning and anything that you have to add to the conversation, I appreciate very much. So if you know anything about the maker of this, <laughs> let us know because I don't know anything and I don't see any mark. But what I am noticing is that the pin is in this direction here, so that means that it would hang on your clothing this way, right? That would be the orientation of it. Really interesting design, I like that. Very cool. Let's put that guy down here. Okay, now, what we have next? Here's another brooch. So it's a horseshoe with a dark red rhinestone, faceted rhinestone on in a gold tone that looks quite old. Open worked to the back of them. And it's dark like a garnet, I suppose. Really pretty. Looks very vintage. Maybe antique, not sure learning <laughs> but isn't that pretty wow okay all right so what do we have here that's five items and they're all brooches <laughs> okay let's get a necklace in here too then okay mix it up a little all right here we have wow let me get this guy out of the way a bit so this is faceted glass or crystal and it's a dark finish with AB coating what do you call that this has to have a name does it have something to do with oil you know like it looks like an oil slick nice they are glass they're cold and heavy it's a triple strand this is the clasp it's just like a oh a hook clasp and there is a name in there let's see what do you say made in Austria 
right? Oh my god. What do you say? Okay, I'm pausing to get the loop. One sec. Okay. I got the loop. Let's see. Hmm. It's still really hard to see, but I'm certain it says made in Austria. So Austrian crystals, once again. But I think that's pretty special, that dark. It's almost like it was done on black glass instead of clear. I don't know if I'm accurate saying that or not. Um, here, let me back it up. So it's, it is a graduated triple strand like that. How beautiful. Okay. And uh, so at the clasp here, this is what it looks like. It's a silver tone. Okay, so there we go. Here's our goodies for today. So now we're going to move into photographing and listing these. Well, researching and photographing. The listing part I won't bore you with. Um, but yeah, we can certainly dig in here into the photographing part, which is the fun part. So let's do that. I'm going to pause the video and we'll get back into that. Okay, so bear with me because this is going to be my first time trying this method of recording, but um, we're going to go ahead and research and um, price and photograph this Sherman brooch that we've come across. So yeah, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look it up. We're going to go to eBay because that's where I'm going to sell it. And I want to make sure I'm comparing it to other sold items on eBay. So what I'm going to search is for Sherman Clear Rhinestone boop, <laughs> Brooch. Gotta love autocorrect. Sherman Clear Rhinestone Brooch. We're going to get quite a few options there. But what we want to know is the sold items. We don't care what people are asking for it. We want to know what people actually got for it. Uh, so we're going to switch on the sold items and the filters. So this is going to show us the, the ones that have actually sold and how much for. Um, the other thing I like to do is search by the highest price. So I'm looking at the best of the best solds right off the hop. And uh, so looking through here, you can see they all have a sold date above them. You can see when it sold and for how much. And we're looking for something similar. There's one that is similar um, to the one that we have. It says it sold for $52.15 uh, plus $6.36 shipping. That's great. This other one here, this is fairly similar in that it's just a clear rhinestone brooch from them for $26. And carry on through here. It's a little less specific. We're going to start getting things that are colored, not just clear, uh, but should still be Sherman. So that's good. And well, there's another one fairly similar, 50 bucks. So in the end, I'd say it's worth 50. This is, oh, hang on. Look at that one. That one's pretty similar too. 128.88. That, um, that's quite similar as well, as far as it being sort of an organic, leafy look. Uh, here's another one that's 46, very similar. 90, very similar. Aha! Look at that. There is ours exactly. Let me flick back to ours here. See that? There's ours. It's got sort of a pinwheel thing going on there. And we'll go back to eBay here. And there's our exact one. It sold for 51 plus 14 shipping. So we're going to go and uh, make a note of that price. So figure out our price based on everything else that we've seen. And I'll show you what I do with that as well. But first, we're going to take some pictures of this brooch. So I like how it looks on the white. Uh, if you've 
I don't know if you if you're on Texas Gal Jewelry Lovers, you'll have seen me talk about or show my brooch photography previously. Now, first thing, look at this. Let's see, I'm going to use this as a learning moment, but look at kind of blurry and like fuzzy around because you know what? You got to clean your lens. You got to clean the lens before you start taking pictures or things look fuzzy. So I'm just going to pause and we'll see the difference after I polish it off here. And, and there we go. Look at that. Nice and clear. Um, it doesn't help you to sell things if it looks fuzzy. Uh, it might give it some drama, um, Days of Our Lives style, but it certainly doesn't help you to sell it. So I'm going to put my brooch on the ring holder like this. Just slides right on. And make sure it's nice and centered on there. And we're going to take our first picture. So first I like to get one that's got the full um, stand in it, surrounding with the black um, background. So, okay, let me back up again here. So this is my photo box I have here. It's got white lights that are being diffused. See? Like that. And then down here I've got one, two, three velvet boards, black velvet boards that are just like this. This is a white one, but just a piece of cardboard and they normally would fit in inside of a tray like this. Um, but we just have them out for a background here and the, yes there's a seam here but as you see when we zoom in on this guy everything behind it disappears the i did sticky roll these before we started but look at there's there's lint don't get me wrong there's lint there's more flying around but once you're zoomed in here uh everything behind it kind of disappears doesn't it so this is our first picture. We got the whole stand surrounded in the black background and boom, we're going to take that picture and oops, what am I doing here? There we go. And now we're going to get a little closer and down with a slightly different perspective, just down a little more in front of it. And from this angle, I'm now going to turn here. Now there's a little bit of glue you can see and terrible nail polish, but there's a little bit of glue there you can see. I may or may not bother to correct that in editing afterward. Editing can be important, but if you can just take a good picture... Oh, hang on, I got a phone call. Uh, yeah, so if you can just start with a good picture, then you don't need to worry about spending time editing the photos. So I've turned it, I'm going to take a picture from the side. And then I'm going to turn it and take the other side. The other thing I like to do while I've got it in this position is a zoomed in close up, like a hot sexy pose like this. Fill the, fill the page, make it sort of dramatic off to the side. Okay, so now that we've got those, we can get rid of this and we're going to bring in a different, let's see, well maybe just another black. I've got another riser here in black and what happens if we put that guy on there see I don't like it as much what I'm looking for is to get pictures of the back now anyway and I just think it doesn't show up very well like that I'm just gonna leave it here on the on the bottom velvet it's gonna show some lint because I'm down close to it but hey we're human there's nothing we can do about excessive lint. All right, so we got a picture of the back here, and then you can see where this this the uh, signature is. So we're gonna zoom in, move your camera around until you can see it really well, and there we go. You can read that it says Sherman, and we we'll take the picture. The other thing I like to do, and I know it's not traditionally like cool to have your hands in the photos. Uh, I mean, that's the impression I've gotten anyway so far in this world. <laughs> but I like to do a picture of especially brooches and earrings on my hand because it really gives an, an idea of the size of it. I do include the size in my listing, but in this case here, um, I like to show the size of the brooch itself. I know hands are all different. Your hand is not the same size as mine, but this gives you an idea, a physical reference to the size of the brooch. 
So we're going to take that picture there. All right. So now if we go in and we look, we have got this picture. We've got a close-up of the name. Uh, that could be better. It's a little bit blurry. So let's redo that while we're here. Let's just do it. Why not? Um, let's get in close on the name. Find a good angle where you can read it. There, that looks nicer. And take it. Okay, checking it out. That looks good. This one, I'm right away moving it to the trash. Don't even mess with it. You don't need it in your gallery. There's our hot sexy pose. Side, side, front, and down angle. All right, that's something else. We'll talk about that another day, maybe. So now that we have that, here is what I do. Let me just pause the video for one moment and I'll prepare how I store my inventory for you. One moment. Okay, so now for every piece that I have, I put it into a little baggie, like a, just a little plastic bag, and I make up a paper. I also have a spreadsheet where I'm recording the same things. So this is my item code. Everything's got an item code. Uh, at the jewelry store, everything I do is V and then a number, uh, V for vintage, uh, because we have other things that we sell on our eBay store as well, like stamps and coins and other fine jewelry, but this is specific to our vintage category. So anyway, I'll make a quick few notes, same kind of notes that I have in my spreadsheet about it. Sherman clear crystal rhinestone pinwheel floral brooch, and I'm going to go $85 plus shipping. Shipping is a uh, separate uh, usually we're shipping in Canada at 15 bucks and 20 in the States. And then I have my measurements here as well, 2.1 inches across after I've measured it. This little yellow dot is for me, <laughs> only for me. It's probably totally unnecessary, but it's something that I have included. And it's, um, I, once I have it listed, I'll write the word listed in that dot. And that way... I know that I've listed it and I can move on with life and anyway, probably unnecessary. So then I like to put in, oops, put the piece in the bag like this. My paper goes in the opposite side uh, to the back of the piece. That way, sorry, I'm trying to do this one and it is a little tricky. Okay. That way I've got my notes here with my inventory number and then on the back side I can flip it over and see the piece easily and that's how I that's how I store it I've got uh, long bins where they're just tick, 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 uh, lined up and in numeric order it makes it really easy to find a piece later on all right let's pause and uh, well let's go on to the next one here so the next one we have um, is one sec this one, this one is that blue Rivoli Austrian crystal brooch and gold tone. Um, it's got like an Alexandrite or Tanzanite kind of blue to purple gorgeousness. And it is marked on the back made in Austria. Uh, so yes, um, we did a little bit of research on this. Let's pop over to eBay. Let's check it out. So now we're searching for, let's say, Austrian crystal, oh, it's not going to let me do it by voice, fine, I'll type it, Austrian um, crystal brooch, uh, I think I'm going to add the word vintage in here, all right. Okay, so we're looking for something with the Rivoli, something with the blue, something similar in size. Um, oh, and we need to switch it to sold, of course. I will often switch it to buy it now as well because we don't do any of our vintage stuff in auction. Um, so I, I still get 38 results if in for people who are selling it the same way we plan on selling it. So we're going to go with that. Buy it now and um, sold items. So right away, the first thing I see is like this guy here is 
similar but different. Let's get a better look at it. I don't see any Rivoli, but it is like a collection of blues. And the photos aren't that bad, but they're also not that great. So we know we're going to have one up on this particular blue brooch with our better photos. And that one went for Canadian 31 plus 27 shipping. So that's pretty high for shipping. Uh, stunning vintage. The pink one's really nice. That went for 70. Uh, 57 on the pink. 82 on this multicolored one. There's a green... I mean, and these are all different from the one that I have, but similar. So it's definitely our point of reference at this stage. Okay, so I'm looking at, and from what I'm seeing here, I want to list this brooch for 50. I think it'll sell for 50. So now we're going to take our pictures and make it look for sure $50 worth. Um, this is undone here. So the other thing here is that it's got a C clasp that's been broken. It's not like an old or whatever. What do you call that? It should have the piece that spins and closes, but it doesn't. Um, some people might think that that's making it like a, a C clasp, like an old style C clasp, but it isn't. Oh my God. I have to pause and put this on one moment. All right, there we go. We got it on now. We're going to take that first power shot <laughs> of it on its stand with the whole black background around it. The whole stand is in there. Everything's in focus and take the photo. Oops. And take the photo. There we go. Beauteous. It's a little bit off center, but that's something I can fix later. Or just take the picture now. Like I say, if you can do editing while you're taking the pictures, it's going to save you some time later. And then we're going to, all right, sorry, down in front like this. Mm, that's so beautiful. I love it. We're going to turn it sideways and get our little sideways shot here. Good. Other side. And good. Now you can see once you get on a roll with this, you can really get get things done quickly. And now we're going to take our hot and sexy shot. Mmm. Yeah. That's nice. I like that. And off of this guy, we need to get pictures of the back. So let's, which way does it go here? Made in Austria is this way, so let's just hold it that way. All right, so here we go. There's the back. And I like to show a good picture of the clasp, especially in this case since it is um, not intact. Um, I would kind of turn my camera here, but I can't because of how I'm capturing my screen. And then we're going to get in made in Austria. All right, and like I say, we're going to get the hand because look at how big that is. And that gives you a really good idea. It gives a person a good idea that this, this is a big brooch. Like this, boom. Oops. Boom. Okay, let's review our photos. That one, is it good? I can zoom in. If it, because of all the reflections, it sort of makes it, makes you think maybe it's out of focus, but it's not. Look at that. Nice and focused. There's our made in Austria, showing the, cla the, the closure, and then a good picture of the back. There's our hot and sexy, side, side, front, and top. Gorgeous. Boom. Done. All right. So, in the meantime, I've also made up my inventory slip for it. So, we've got our inventory number vintage austrian crystal blue turquoise rivoli rhinestone gold tone all the words again i've got my dot for when i've listed it i write the word listed in there i'm going to do this one for 60 plus shipping uh 2.4 inches across and so that was based on the comparables that we saw there um 65 dollars plus shipping i saw 105 plus shipping were some close comparables so when I think about those prices, I think this will easily go at $60. Alrighty, now our next one, 
Oh, let's get this put away properly. Let's just finish the job, right? Get it done all the way. Now, normally when I'm doing this, I will list immediately before I even photograph the next item. I'll just take all of these steps piece by piece and then and then um, that way when I walk away from this photo booth everything I've worked on is already listed and put away and done that's how I roll that's how what I like to do anyway all right let me get the next piece ready for you okay the next one we are gonna work on is this garnet horseshoe um, looking at it it is not uh, real garnets and you can see that this one here maybe oops 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 has maybe been replaced it's quite a bit pinker than the others if we hold it up to the light I don't know if you can tell but I could tell in the sunshine anyway it's quite a bit pinker there you go you can kind of see that um, so what we need is okay um, so yeah this one's on gold tone open back and we're going to take its pictures let's get it onto the ring holder make sure it's nice and straight looks good okay now here we go we're gonna get our full shot here now in this case I might consider taking those backs out because the stones are so dark you can see you kind of lose them there but with the white background you see the redness more so of the stones so I'm gonna take these out and maybe move this back so that we end up with a pure white background behind it specifically also with the black because the black is balancing the white so in this case you might see me do this where I brighten it a little bit and that's again a little bit of pre-editing saves me going in and brightening my picture afterward and this is to make it true true to what it actually looks like in real life you never want to edit anything so that it looks unrealistic compared to what it looks like in person all right, so there's another one. We're going to get our side pictures here. I'm just going to zoom through these quickly. Because uh, I'm realizing that the next time we do one of these videos, we should do it maybe with just three items. Because I still got two more over here and we're getting kind of long. But, uh, but that's okay. We're having fun and we're learning a little bit. Hopefully you'll find this helpful um, and useful. I don't mind certainly don't mind doing them all right now we get a good shot of the back what I do is take my riser my wide my taller riser and put it on end this way that way I can put this guy down here get it centered and the black background with the white should make it stand out a little nicer. Like this. See, and you can see where the back is showing up here, the edges. So you want to try and get in tight enough. And you can always crop later to get there, but um, if you can, like again, if you can just do your editing while you're taking the pictures, you're going to save yourself time. So there's a nice picture of the back. And then we're going to do our hand as well like this again getting all the black background in here and oops and I think what I'll do here also is try to demonstrate that one stone being changed or different it's kind of hard to to see um, but either way I think that's kind of a nice photo I don't like that my fingers are in it but how the heck else am I going to hold that? Well, that shows the stones nicely. So we're going to use that anyway. So let's look at our pictures. We've got this guy. Um, and this one was with the background showing. So we're going to trash that one. That turned out really good. Don't you think? I do. 
side view, side view, front view, front view, and then we're back there. So I'm not as big a fan of how these look, but like you could see, having the white background made it stand out more. So I, I certainly prefer when we can just have a black background on the white stand, but either way, that's what we're dealing with. So let's look on eBay. Let me get my background back in here so that this look this looks okay for us at least. And we can put this guy back in as well. Boom. Okay. There we go. Now let's go to eBay. And we're going to search Garnet Horseshoe Brooch. And I do want to put the word vintage in there because we are not looking for a new version of this. Okay, so we get some stuff. This one says Bohemian Garnet? Question mark. Does that mean you're not sure if it's actual garnet? Let's see what they say here about this one. Item description. One stone appears messed up. That's like mine. I got one stone that appears messed up. But what do you mean by messed up? One stone appears messed up. Let's look at these pictures. The back doesn't look to be as nice of a quality as the one that we have. One stone appears messed up. I don't see anything about a messed up stone, but the pictures are terrible. Um, so that makes me feel good. There's only two uh, showing there. So <laughs> this is certainly not what we have. $532, that would be lovely. However, this is a little bit closer vintage high-end brooch pin high-end you give us two photos and just tell me that it's high-end is it gold does that make it high-end is that why it's high-end blah 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 okay anyway that one sold for 24 plus 20 shipping Carrying on down the line here, maybe, maybe let's try taking out the garnet part of this. Horseshoe is what I'd like to see now. So there's a daisy one for 30. Okay. All right. I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to write up my slip. Oh, that's one of mine. <laughs> nice. I love seeing my own listings. Um, when I'm looking through eBay for other listings that I'm creating. Anyway, uh, I'm going to pause this and we're going to make up a slip here. Hang on. Alrighty, so here's our slip. Vintage faux garnet gold tone horseshoe brooch. In the description, I'll put something about how it, it looks like this one stone may have been replaced at one point, but that it's a very good replacement. Um, the measurements are there one and a quarter inches by one inch and my yellow dot for when I have listed it So there we go Now we have a couple more items. So let's get into the next one All right, so we have another brooch here now this guy very pretty um, kind of a modernist style is what I've determined. No name or anything, and I have tried and tried. I cannot find one that looks like it at all. So when we get to the research part of this, um, I'll let you know what I found and what I decided I would list it for. So first picture we're gonna take is here, showing the full thing, sort of an up, and uh, like an on top of angle. And we're gonna get down in front of it a bit more look to the left look to the right and then we get our sexy shot close up like this okay. or should we try one this way no I like the other way 
Maybe turn a little more, get the whole thing a bit more. Nice. Okay. Oops. Sorry, that makes it hard for you to watch. Next, we're going to get the back like this. A little bit close up because it's, it's a detailed back. There's a lot of layers and um, so good to give more photos, the better, really. There's no name or anything on it. So now we do our in-hand photo. I always got to fix my rings and turn them around. There we go. In-hand photo. Boom. And let's see what we got. That one looks good. No, the AB coating on those stones is not really standing out the way I would like it to, like they do here, like it does there. It's a lot more washed out in my hand. So I'm going to retry that photo and a different angle where I'm going to be able to showcase that a bit more. Like, like there, perhaps. What about with a white background? Oh, that's nice. Let's put these down and get up high and do a white background. There. That's good. Put these back up. Now we can look at our pictures. Make sure everything is good. The nice thing about having a photo booth is it's easy to take good pictures. And the rest is just all about how beautiful the subject matter is. It's easy to take good pictures of beautiful things. Is what I say. Alright, we got a good picture of the back here. A couple of them. And I mean, they're kind of redundant. I think this one and this one are a bit redundant. It's kind of showing the exact same thing. But it doesn't hurt to have them all in your listing. Uh, people who are serious about buying something from you don't mind if there's a couple of pictures that seem repetitive. Now from here to here, very repetitive. I'm going to ditch this one because the gold tone's not as nice. This is beautiful. Which one's better? This one? Because you see both of the bottom ones there. So yes, I'm going to delete this guy. Now which one is better? This one or this one? I think this one is. It just sort of shows the detail a bit better. So again, delete. Get it out of there. You don't need it in your phone if you're not using it. Okay, we've got our side, side, front, and top angle. Beautiful. There's our pictures. Now, I did the research as well off camera. Um, I couldn't find anything that looked just like it, but this is where I ended up. I'm calling it Vintage AB Crystal Rhinestone Marquee. When I actually list it, I'll probably write AB and Aurora Borealis if I have enough characters, enough room to do so. And uh, Gold Tone Modernist Brooch. $40 is what I landed on for some generic brooch stuff. So um, that's what we're going to go with. And then again, my circle for marking it when it is listed. All right, moving on. We have one item left here. Get these guys out of the way. And let me get it set up here for you. Oh, my land. All right, we've got our last item now, and it is a necklace this time. Um, this is the Aurora Borealis, and I believe it's coated black glass, and that's how you get this sort of an oil slick look. Now we have a variety of busts here. I've got this really big white one. I've got a hot pink one, beige, black. Um, let's try this one on the white one first, I think. Okay, let's just see how it looks on the white one. I have to pause you for a moment here. Alrighty. So we've got it on the white bust. Now the white bust is taller than my black background, so I'm not really keen on using this white bust, but it looks really nice on it. Anyway, it looks nice and colorful. Let's try a different bust here. Um, I don't often use it, but it could be fun in this case to use the hot pink one. Let's see how it looks. Yeah. 
Make sure everything is laying properly. Oh, come on. One-handed, you guys. This is tough stuff. All right, there we go. Looks pretty nice on the pink, I would say. So when it comes to a necklace, I like to have a full-on shot like this, where you see the whole bust from top to bottom. And then I like to get in tight where the whole necklace is in there, regardless of the size of the bust, like this. And then just like the brooches, I like to turn it. So I like to get sort of a side angle like this. I like to get close up side angle like this. It gives a really nice perspective. You can see how the beads are filling the screen right from the left. They scoop down and up or from the right and they scoop down and disappear up through the left corner. So we're really filling the screen with these beautiful beads. And then up at the back, sometimes I'll catch one like this too to show how it happens at the back. Um, the back of the bust is ugly here, but if you can, you can get in tight like this. But we'll be showing that part of the necklace uh, in a different way. And then just like the brooches, I like to get both sides. Move this guy over so that you got the black background fully. And there we go. So that's it on the pink. I still want to try it on another color bust. I kind of want to try it on this beige, beige one here. It's not white, but it's not black. Um, this will look good on black as well. And again, here I'm going to have multiple images with on different color busts, and I will post more than one. I want people to be able to see what does it look like against a light color? What does it look like against black? Um, Something that we'll make sure we get a good picture of is these beads that are wearing slightly. The big ones in the middle. Um, looks like maybe just, yeah, just the big ones in the middle and mainly this shorter strand. Uh, but other than that, they look like they're in very nice condition. Oh, there's one a little bit. So a little bit of wear. Um, consistent with age is what I would say there because this is very vintage. Austrian crystals and make sure everything is looking good. I'm going to disclose about the the wear on this bead and I'm going to, sh I, I already have there, taken a good picture of the wear. So that's something that the buyer will be, will know about it. But when I'm taking my photos, I'm, I'm, I might want to turn this like that. So you don't see it as much, right? We're not deceiving anybody. That information is included with photographs of it, but um, the overall aesthetic of this photo will be nicer without seeing it as much there. All right, so there's our full photo of the necklace. There's our turn. And close up of the front. Filling up the screen with all the beautiful AB-ness. <laughs> and again from the side. Nice. Very nice. Super pretty. Love some Aurora Borealis. Now, just because we can. And I realize that I have luxury here that, that we don't have at home. I don't have this luxury at home either, you guys. This is just at work. But you can take what you can from what I'm doing here and apply it with, you know, with what you have at home. So we've got a lot of lint and fuzz. And that's always a problem with black. But in this case here, I'm going to be able to uh, adjust my brightness a little bit. Uh, see, I don't know. I don't really like how that looks anyway. You can't get away from all the lint. And let's go into the photos here. Oops, sorry, that's going to make you puke. We'll go into the photos here. Okay, so there's the black. I think it looks really nice on that beige. It makes it stand out. The fuchsia is really fun. See, there's a great picture of uh, the wear. Okay, good. The fuchsia is fun. But it really stands out, looks nice on that beige. 
I will include pictures of the fuchsia. And the other thing we're going to include right now is a picture of the thing laying down. So you can't have just pictures of the bust. Ugh, crumbs and crud. Dust and... If I wasn't filming right now, I'd probably sticky roll that, but I am, so I won't. So you need to show the whole thing. You need to lay it down and show the whole necklace. Because so far, all of our pictures, as gorgeous as they are, are only showing it. You can't, you can't see the back of it, right? It's just as it would look on you. So here we go. We're going to lay it out like this. And it's hard to get a good picture. I kind of have to turn my phone and go from above. And, it, and they don't look good, but it's, I mean, in my books, they don't really look good. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, I don't like how that looks, but it gives a person an idea of it. Okay. I'm going to put you to the side here and do a little research quickly. Or let's go together. Let's go together to eBay. And we're going to search AB Crystal Necklace. Oops, that doesn't say crystal. Vintage. Let's put the word vintage at the front. And it helps if we spell vintage correctly. There we go. Let's see what we come up with here. Vintage AB Crystal Necklace. So we've got some other colors. There's blue, yellow, red, rainbow. Um, lots of different options there. The classic crystal, clear crystals. Um, what I think I have here is a black um, a black crystal coated. And in, in the... Um, in the hook closure, it does say Austria, so um, that's why I, I'll be able to include the word Austrian crystal in my listing. So we've gone to sold, and we get 526 results. I'm going to go to buy it now to narrow it down a little more, 169. All right, now because there's 169, I'm going to sort it by price. Ooh, look at that, Juliana. Somebody bought that one for 756 Canadian Okay, we're getting distracted now, kids. Okay, back up, back up, back up. Uh, okay, let's see. What looks like what we have here? Ooh, Rivoli's are nice. That's nice. Green, I like the green. Um, again, that's that's like what we have, but a little more unique. That green, I've, I, I've not seen one in person like that. Um... Yeah, should I put in maybe triple strand there? Multicolored Australian crystal beaded vintage necklace, $73. Again, we've got some wear on ours. I need to consider that when pricing it. So what we have is very similar to this, but we don't have the earrings and, um, and ours is black. So, oh, that one's got the bracelet too. Never mind. That's a little bit different. Swarovski. Okay, so based on what I'm seeing here, price-wise, I'm going to say, well, I already have said, let's see here, I'll show you what I've got for my sheet. All right, vintage, triple strand, graduated, black Aurora Borealis, Austrian crystal bead uh, necklace, obviously. I'm going to do 40 bucks. I think with the wear that we have here, um, I think I could probably get more, but I don't want to push it. I'd rather move it. You know what I mean? And I've made a note here that it's 14 inches long with a three inch extender. Um, and that's everything I need for listing it. All right. So let me get that back in the bag here and we'll wrap this up. All right, there you go. That's how I do it at work. Um, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Make sure you're subscribed. I'd love to do this again. Um, like I say, let me just show you what I got. What's going on here? 
Oh, sorry. Let me show you what I got going on. I've got this bag. That's what we started digging into, but I have all three of these boxes full of goodies. We got the Joan Rivers box here. This is all for us, you guys. This is for us. And I'd love to continue this series. Um, five pieces was too many for this. I think it's that we're looking at like an hour long video, which normally I try and keep things under 20 minutes. So uh, yeah, let me know if you learned anything. If there's anything you have, you can teach me. Uh, I did take photography in school. I went to, in, in college. Um, and I had a company where I was doing wedding photography and portrait photography for a while. So photography is something that's always been part of my creative outlet. And I'm happy if I can share anything with you um, to, to help you with your reselling as well. So yeah, that's it for today. If you haven't already, uh, click subscribe. If you click the bell icon, you'll be notified every time I post a new video. I really like taking you to work here with me, so I'd like to keep this going. If you've enjoyed the the episode, then uh, give me a like and leave a comment, and I'll know uh, that I can keep making them. And I think I probably will, even if you don't. <laughs> Thanks again uh, for hanging out and looking at the sparklies, and we'll talk to you again soon.